Hey guys, this will be the recap for day one. You know, three weight classes for the men, three for the women. So quite a lot to get into. And this here, this is what everyone wanted to see, right? This was one of the highly requested matches that I see in the comments all the time. They just want to see Sasaki and Nagase duke it out. Who is the better guy at 81? And I mean, they're both from the same university. So both coming from Scuba. And I had an idea in my head that between them, they know. They're, I think they're pretty familiar with each other. And the way this match went, I think it's pretty obvious who who gets the upper hand in these battles. So uh, the match is pretty short. And you'll see here after this exchange. But Sasaki, and watch him put his hand over his mouth. He's like, okay, right now I have to extend my knee because it is busted. His knee, ever since this this here I mean he had, he had a few other matches and his knee did not look too good so I hope it's nothing serious I hope it's nothing that's gonna keep him out for a while but yeah his knee did not look good after this at all although here I mean he puts in some some good attacks but it's really after this match with Nagase against against Yalo from France he just didn't look too good you could see his knee was kind of like locking up and he couldn't really fully extend his leg. It wasn't too good, but Nagase, Nagase, he's probably not caring about this too much. He's thinking, this is my job. I got to get through Sasaki. I got to get that gold medal. And what does he do? Pulls out a lovely Uchimata. And watch the fade backwards. Starts moving backwards and, and that just loads Sasaki up onto his leg. Here's a little shuffle backwards. And just opportune timing. Nagase really good there. So we've seen it guys. That's that's Nagase versus Sasaki. What do you think? Was it just the knee injury? Or does Nagase really have his number? Who knows? So we'll just uh, spend a little bit more time talking about Sasaki. Go through some of his highlights. And we'll also have a look at a bronze medal match. Look at this Tomoe Nage. Into a bit of Neowaza. And the Judoka from Cyprus, he did well, well to dodge that. Couldn't dodge this though. A nice Seoi Otoshi. Looking here from Uranagi attempts. And Sasaki, he's got really, he's got a, a huge repertoire of techniques. I was kind of worried, you know, he he had the reverse Seoi Nage taken away from him, but I mean, he's got so many techniques. I mean, this Uchimata is pretty sensational, right? That is a ridiculous Uchimata. So Sasaki losing to Nagase in the semi-finals. And that put him in the ripper charge against Jalo from France. And I definitely think maybe Jalo was a stronger guy. He was also more explosive. And I think with the, with the knee injury for Sasaki, he might have been a bit reluctant to attack. And he tried to take it to the ground quite a lot. But... Jalo, Jalo did really well to avoid all of this sort of craziness that was going on. And here I thought I thought Sasaki pulled him back over, and this is this is a Sasaki special, this this turnover that he does here, but Jalo found the exit, managed to escape, and I think Sasaki was really surprised. Looking for it again. And then went for the armbar. And even here, I mean, Jalo manages to escape. So yeah, I've been I've been a bit critical of French judo recently. We got a huge population, but not too many guys in the male categories that are, you know, at the top. But Jalo definitely proving that he should be there. Him, Teddy Rainier, anyone else I'm missing? Odd techniques from Sasaki here. These kind of, I guess they're sacrifice throws, right? It's not a version of Seo Nage. I think the, the I think this technique has a name. I can't quite remember what it's called. But he was just trying anything to get Jalo down to the ground. And in the end, this is into golden score now, but Sasaki, two shitos to his name. Jalo just looks good, offensive all the time. And this was a really good Seoi Nage. I don't have the, the footage of it, but there's a, another angle where the first entry from Jalo really hits Sasaki in the head with his shoulder. Just kind of bangs into him right here. And I think from that, Sasaki, a bit disorientated, a bit off balance. And Jalo found the perfect opportunity to get in there. 
Okay, we're gonna go a bit all over the place here, but an upset. Lee, one of my standout judoka of 2022, but still a bit young, very young. I'm not sure if he's turned 21 yet, but Hans Okamake against Fujiwara. There was also Koga. Koga had a good showing, but losing in the final against Hashimoto. I'm pretty sure they'll send him out again because he had such a good performance. So yeah, there was Jalo. Fujiwara taking bronze at 81. Also at under 73. We had Oyoshi Ken and Moka from Poland. It was good to see a judoka not from Japan on the podium. The amount of times I listened to the Japanese national anthem. Just un unbelievable. We had Ai Sunoda taking bronze at under 70. I'm still a bit undecided if Sunoda can actually cut down to 63. I feel like she looks kind of small every time she goes out there, but I don't know. If, if she can, she should at least attempt it. Uh, there was also Telsido from Greece taking bronze at under 70. Quite a nice Ogoshi here. And of course, guys, if you're wondering uh, where the gold medal matches are, we'll talk about the females here, but the males, I've got individual videos on those. So go check those out if you want to have a look at the finals in a bit more detail. Horikawa getting a bronze here, taking out Heika from Australia. It's good to see the Australian woman doing quite well on the day. Takaichi took gold at under 63. Bit of feistiness going on here, but she took out Nabekuda early on, who ended up getting a bronze medal. So it's just, I mean, you look at the final brackets, it's just Japan, 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 Japan. Japan everywhere. I, I, I kind of wonder if it was a record, you know, most gold medals for one country on one day. I mean, it, they did kind of have so many categories on one day, putting um, all the matches on two days instead of three. And they did that for sponsorship reasons, apparently. They want all the Abe's to go on the Sunday instead of the Saturday, and I guess Aaron Wolf as well. Uh, yeah, so sponsorship reasons, that's why they, they made it two days instead of three. Tamaoki taking bronze against Kim here. And for gold at 57, we had Yoshida versus Funakubo. And Yoshida, I mean, she's got this trademark Kosoto that she does. Gets Funakubo to the ground and then looks for a little bit of a Newaza transition, but Funakubo does well to just kind of read it. And then here, I'm not sure, needs to be a bit more urgency from Yoshida, but not not enough, not enough. Funokubo manages to get the turnover and into the Osai Komi, so gold for her. And lastly guys, before we get into the men's under 90s, Nizoi and Nizoi against Coughlin. Coughlin, another Australian, so two Australians in, in final medal matches, how often do you see that? But going out against Nizoi, beautiful Harai Goshi. I mean, just look at this, leg comes across. Picture perfect. Okay, so earlier on, Trapel. Trapel took out Morao. That was one of the upsets on the day at under 90, but it wasn't the only one. Trapel and Morao, they got a bit of a rivalry going on. Morao throwing him I think, was it 20, 2020? Not too f too long ago, it might have been 2021. A nice Uchimata. So those two, developing a bit of a rivalry. And I like what Trapel's doing here, burning the clock. Getting a Wazari out, burning the clock like that. And then uh, Baker, he had, he also lost to Trapel. This really, really quick bit of Nawaza. And I was kind of, I was kind of expecting this to happen to Baker, I think. The time away, you know, your reactions aren't as fast, people are kind of advancing the game and you're not there. So that was unfortunate. But then Baker had to come up against Becca Udi for the bronze medal match. And I mean, Becca Udi, this is, this is ferocity. And he just, he just caved to the pressure. I think Baker has kind of a, he, li he likes to have a low posture, not kind of straight up like Mashiyama. And I think Becca Uri does much better at dealing with people who have kind of posture like, like Baker does. Just the pressure was too much. He didn't know what to do with it. So Becca Uri wins with Shiro's for that one, for the bronze. And then Murao. Murao and Mukai. They meet in the bronze middle match as well. And Murao gets this nice Kochigari here for the bronze. 
And I don't know why this clip is at the end of the video, but Guac. Guac made his return. If you know who Guac is, he's got a mean Taitoshi through Mukai with it uh, at the World Championships in 2019. Haven't seen him much since, but he made a, a little return and just an unfortunate bracket to meet Beko Udi early in round two. So that was day one, guys. I'll see you again for day two coming soon. And of course, Top Ephon's coming soon as well. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Peace out.